How to grow your dead YouTube channel in five simple steps. And no, this video was not clickbait. Today I'm talking to Steve, who went from taking over one year just to get 150 subscribers to now having over 20,000 subscribers. I saw some of the biggest growth I've ever seen on my channel. Which is pretty damn impressive when you consider that on average it takes five years just to get your first 10,000 subscribers, according to this study from TubeBuddy. And then as if reviving his channel once wasn't enough, all his momentum disappeared like a fart in the wind when he hit 13,000 subscribers, as you can see here. And so he used these exact same steps to revive his channel yet again, which resulted in this peak here. <laughs> And as of me talking to him in this video, he was getting almost 500,000 views and about 2,000 subscribers within the last 28 day mark period. And when I asked Steve if he thought his channel reviving process could be replicated by anyone, he said, absolutely, anybody can replicate this. And so I jumped on a call with Steve to figure out how he twice revived his dead channel so you can use his process to revive your own channel. 2017, just decided, you know, I see people YouTube gaming, they're just playing games, sharing it with the community and I like gaming so let me just play whatever game that's trending at the time or whatever I'm having fun with that's why early on I, I, I had no success and I didn't know what I was doing but slowly into 2018 Madden 19 came out and I was like you know what it'd be fun to, to record a franchise series with one of my favorite teams and just post that let's see if it's any fun and because I've seen other youtubers that have done that in the Madden space and it clicked and, and finally after a year you know just kind of do a variety gaming with no structure no plan Madden kind content and sports gaming content found an audience for me and a light bulb all of a sudden just came on for me and i'm just like well there's this audience that likes this sport to likes this game that i do and it's resonating so i doubled down and turned it into a long form series style content and i rode that probably over 100 uploads for that one series it, it just kind of became my thing and it, and I grew an audience from that and I hovered around 14,000 subscribers for about a year and Madden was going downhill for me for a little bit of time. And I started to feel discouraged about, well, this is what I built my brand on for four years now. And I saw my channel starting to kind of flatline, uh, which is always a fear as a creator. I think once you see your channel, you know, you see the charts, you see everything and you're like, well, we're moving in the right direction, but then you hit a plateau or you flatline here. And it stayed that way for about a year. I didn't see the growth I've seen the years prior. And that scared me as a creator. At this point now, I'm like, I want this to eventually be a full-time thing. And then seeing it just kind of flatline made me get out of my comfort zone where I had to become an innovator. So the first big one, it's that you have to evolve. You can't have a fear of creation. I had to become an innovator and not be, you know, kind of like an assembly line worker doing the same thing day in and day out, which is what I did for really three years. If I'm honest with myself, I was lazy with my approach and I didn't take the steps necessary to evolve as a content creator in an ever evolving space, which is YouTube gaming, where there's thousands of new creators every year, it seems like, or even every week or month, I had to continue to evolve. And I made a big switch staying within the football sports niche, but moving from professional NFL to college. And that switch took a lot of convincing and research, um, but I saw proven results from content creators within the niche. I saw a really hungry audience and community that was wanting more and more of this style of content. So I made the switch. And from there, I have seen the biggest growth I've ever seen on my channel since probably 2020, whenever Madden really launched my channel to 10,000 plus subs. This is the biggest I, I, I've ever had my channel. And this switch has helped my own content creation and my own growth as a creator with the type of content I'm, I'm making, the ideas that I'm researching, the editing techniques that I'm doing to help hopefully make my videos have more retention over a long period of time. You have to be bold within your content creation and just, even if you think it's a, an idea that only a small portion of people are gonna like, create it, get it out there. As long as it's within your niche, you're safe at least putting it out there because there's you can get data from it. That's something I'll tell any creator out there if you have your niche, if you've defined exactly, okay, this is what my channel's identity is. Here's the audience I'm trying to target. You've done the research. You have some topic ideas, create, get it out there, do the best you can and create quality content. Don't just throw out some lazy stuff that you're like, I got to get this done now. And you've, you force something out in a day or two, take your time with the creation, 
make the best content that you would be proud of and you would want to watch, but create and, and see how it does. Whatever's working, double down on whatever didn't work and doesn't, didn't resonate. Okay. That's a learning opportunity. It's not a failure. It's not going to kill your channel necessarily. Just see the analytics, what didn't work in that video, what areas were people clicking off at, learn from that, write all that down. That's going to help you grow as a creator. And that's going to help you create better content that will help your channel continue to evolve and hopefully grow. Don't be afraid to use trends, even though trends will inevitably fade away. They're a great way to get a lot of eyes on your content quickly, especially if you capitalize on a trend early. An example of this could be the, the FIFA World Cup. It doesn't matter if it's a sports gaming channel or if it's anything out there, you can take that form format of a world cup and you can implement that into a ton of different concepts whether that be gaming content okay you gotta take the top 32 minecraft players and put them into a world cup scenario or something like that and you could just do all sorts of stuff and you may see a ton of tremendous success with that last year a lot of channels out there capitalized on trends within celebrities i remember i think it was the johnny Depp court case thing there seemed like a million channels all of a sudden were created covering court cases that were pertaining to celebrity figures which ended up being a massive deal and helped launch a lot of channels i'm sure i, I would recommend look at trends within your own niche within the game you're playing within the broader sphere of worldwide, you know, polit uh, politics, sports, gaming, even just look at and see what trends are popping off and try to see if you can make that work. Don't force it into your content necessarily, but see if there's a way you can naturally implement that into your content in a way that is creative, engaging, and something that your audience will want to see more of and come back for. Focusing on your first 30, 40 seconds is paramount. And this is something I'd never understood early on in my creation. I would start off with a long winded intro uh, where I'd introduce myself. I'd introduce what just happened on the last video and here's what we're doing today. And then a minute and a half in, we finally get into what we're doing at that point. I'm, I've lost over half my audience easy. That opening 30 seconds is pivotal to engaging and locking in your audience. The goal is to get your videos points across immediately. And this is something Mr. Beast does to perfection. As soon as you click on his video, I recreated every single set from Squid Game in real life. He gets straight to the point. You know exactly what he's going to do. You see a little tease of what he's going to be doing. And then he gets into the beginning of whatever the plan may be. So I would stress as a creator, really focus on that first 30 seconds. Lastly, for me, you have to learn to create a feasible schedule that you're not going to burn yourself out on. It's important to create a schedule that is feasible for you, your work schedule, your family life. So you have downtime to process a the analytics and see how your content is resonating within your community B to game plan and to research, to see what next concepts and ideas and videos you can put into action and C just to live stress-free life a little bit, not worrying about content, um, which is important. You can't always be creating. You can't always be turned on. You have to shut off sometimes and just do things for leisure, for your own mental health. As an educator and a coach, you know, I work normally 50, 60 hour weeks. My weekends are my time to create. I batch record and this is my schedule. You know, during the week, I don't record. During the week, I get home from work and I spend time with my family. I spend time you know, just relaxing, playing some games for leisure, watching some TV. I don't worry about YouTube. What I do during the week is I research, I plan. And then when I get to my weekend, I spend that time to batch record. I take all that research, the concepts I've developed, the ideas, and that's when I put it all into action and I record, and then I edit everything. And then I can take all those videos and schedule them out throughout the next week, which is manageable for me. And that may not work for everybody. It's important for each creator to find what schedule works best for you. Maybe it'd be best for you to every other day you record. And then in the days in between you edit, maybe you're like me and on the weekends you record and during the week you plan, but finding a feasible schedule that helps you become the best possible creator you can be without burning out is paramount to your longevity as a creator here on this platform that is at times very, very stressful and can bring a lot of pressure, especially if you're seeing growth. Scheduling a feasible work schedule that you can balance home life, work life, and YouTube life all together is huge. So massive thanks to Steve for coming on. But what if your channel is currently at the point where you're so small or growing so slowly that your channel can't even die? It was never alive in the first place. 
Well, click the video on screen where I'll walk you through the exact process I used to go from getting around 15 subscribers per month to over 1,500 subscribers per month in a little over six weeks.